So we've got some of the artifacts from ancient Egypt in here. Cat amulet and cat figures. Boat model, Dynasty 11. I can't believe that survived. Got some of the some of the jewelry up the top up there. Some of the old shoes and jewelry, earrings. I've seen that face before, the bust of Neferatu. Oh, I've got some faces here, look at that one. From Memphis, Macedonian period. I was going to say it does look Greek that. gaming pieces. You don't think there'd be so much things like that. Really. I wasn't expecting it to be as as much things like this. There's kids in the other room obviously. Look at this here. Papyrus with Greek Greek inscription from Homer's Iliad. Bits that are still remaining. Little foss statues. Some of the little figures up there as well. I'm going to try, try and get the camera up there again. I've got this here. This is actually uh, original stuff here. You can touch it and everything. This column, this two ton block of granite, is a fragment of a much larger co column that was once part, part of the temple of Herif, Herisef. I'm not too sure how you say that one. You can see the inscriptions and the, the writing going down. So we're going to the next bit now. That room through there has got the best bit in it, so stay tuned for that bit, but we'll get in here first. So this just tells you, look at the stars on the ceiling. So the person died, prepares for their journey. Anubis, god of Embarnin, wraps the body. The dead person's heart is weighed against the truth. I don't know what the truth would have weighed, but... Hibis-headed Foth records the verdict. Hawk-headed Horus leads the dead person. This must be after the afterlife. Osiris, god of the afterlife, welcomes the dead person. Also, that must be your journey that you believe happens. And then they prepare the body. Salt to dry out the body. Resins and oils to hide the smell in the body. And then they wrap it. Well, actually, first they do they clean the body. Keeping clean was very important after death. Where did the insides go? So I'm sure many people know what they used to do with the insides. Put them into the little jars. I don't know if there's any examples of the jars. Oh, here we go. Uh, this gives you the example of the jars. That's a monkey. There's a hawk. I always remember... I always remember from the, the mummy film when I was a kid watching it and they, she, she said that they'd put a, a needle up the nose, scramble it about and pull the brain back out. And that, that seems to what it is. The heart was the most important part of the body. They believe that's where the thoughts came from. And that was left in the body, that, and protected by a scarab amulet. Oh, there we go, so that's what they would have been put in. Your lungs are in the monkey. Liver's in the man. I think that's supposed to be a man. And so on, you got the eagle at the end. And they'd wrap your body up then. But let's have a look at some of the stuff they've got in here. These are amazing, these. 
it says that even though they look like they belong together, they're actually not. They're part of two separate um, tombs, those two. From the same period, but different, different people. The detail. This is connected to like rebirth and afterlife. I like these little statues, these are good. Some of the little scarabs. We've also, oh that's uh, mummified animals. It says there that recent work was done at the University of Manchester and it shows that some of them have no animal parts in at all and some have a mixture of different ones. Some of the clothing. Oh, and something's going on. That's the um, mummified child. Thought to believe to be about three year olds when they died. I'm going to try and get into the next bit now. Remembering the dead. The unknown man. Sadly, we no longer know the man's name. Even though his coffin was, even though the coffin he is with doesn't belong to him. The coffin belonged to a woman who was a priestess of the temple. If you look closely, you can see the image. So they don't actually know who this guy was. His body is very well preserved, and his linen wrappings are good quality which suggests he was an important or a wealthy man, but they don't actually know. How crazy is that? Wow. And look at this place as well, they've done it all up. Maybe what a tomb would have looked like. Leave you with the last little image of our mate. So they do believe that this guy could have been a priest because he had a shaved head and the arthritis in his knees, possibly from being kneeled down for so long, of praying. <laughs> 